The application of human rights law in armed conflict also raises specific problems for armed groups. There is no problem for them when human rights law directly applies in armed conflicts, since, as you have already seen, human rights law therefore only applies to states and not to non-state actors. They may have some problems when human rights law is used to interpret IHL or to contribute to customary IHL. Being integrated under IHL, the human rights law requirements would therefore indirectly apply to armed groups. This may first lead to legal problems. For example, as already seen, Common Article 3 to the four Geneva Conventions provides for failed trials guarantees, and in particular, that the trials must be conducted by a regularly constituted court. If this is interpreted in light of human rights law, this would mean established by a law, and according to some, this refers to the laws and procedure already in force in the country. It is well known that no country will ever authorize armed groups creating courts. So such groups will never be able to comply with Common Article 3. In the same way, Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions provides some guarantees with respect to criminal prosecutions and includes the principle of legality. According to that principle, and I quote Additional Protocol 2, no one shall be held guilty of any criminal offence on account of any act or omission which did not constitute a criminal offence under the law at the time when it was committed. Again, if the law is interpreted in light of human rights law as referring to the national law of the country, armed groups will never be able to comply with the principle of legality contained in Additional Protocol 2. Indirect application of human rights law may also lead to practical problems for armed groups and make them difficult to comply with IHL. IHL applies to a variety of armed groups, including those which do not have any territorial control. Interpreting some IHL requirement applicable to them in light of human rights law may lead them to comply with requirements which are unrealistic given their capabilities. This may, for example, be the case if the failed trial guarantees include, in light of human rights law, the right for the accused to have a legal counsel or the obligation to appoint as judges persons having a legal qualification.